13th day of August, 2023. Please rise if you're able and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. We have uh, Deputy Clerk Kim Otati here. Kim, can I ask you to call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman? Here. Councilwoman McNamara? Here. Councilman Martel? Here. Councilman Bouvier? Here. Councilman Scuboni? Present. Okay, so everybody's here. And uh, we're going to start today with the review of the draft agenda for the meeting of August 22nd. That would be next Tuesday right here at Town Hall, as well as via Zoom, and uh, it's an evening meeting, so it's 6 p.m. start. There are only two public hearings. The first is to accept an open space deed um, in connection, I think it should say deed, public hearing to accept open space uh, in connection with the plan, residential plan and density incentive subdivision map of Zurabi. Family Trust Site approved by the South Hampton Town Planning Board on March 10th, 2022. Does it need to say deed or? It should say dedica or dedication, mm -hmm. except, well, you can see the first one. I'm not going to worry about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. No, it's okay. pretty clear. Gonna miss it's it's, it is open space. Um, <clears throat> second public hearings consider the wastewater treatment projects proposed for 2023 Community Preservation Fund 20% water quality improvement plan. Any questions about the public hearings? None. Hearing none, we'll move on to town board resolutions. Uh, 949 uh, accepts grant of conservation easement in connection with the Lewis Road PRD. Did we get everything resolved on that? We're good? Development rights, right? We were going with that. Yeah, that's different. Conservation than easement. Oh, that's right. I just want, yeah, there were some okay. questions about tax maps and stuff. So. Right, right. Um, nine, uh, Cindy, you're next. 950 of 2023, accept deeds of dedication in connection with the Lewis Road PRD. Okay. 996. 996 or 966? 966, authorized supervisor to sign contract with EV Connect for charging station management system at Hong Kong Beach. And we sorted that out too with? Yes. With the yes. Parks Department? Okay, perfect. Um, 440110, authorized extension of groundwater monitoring agreement for the Lewis Road PRD golf course in Squad. Execution again. Um, 44016, authorized purchase and installation of roofing products and services for Roof Services of New York with Tecta America Company LLC using Omnia Partners contract. 44013, authorized supervisor to execute a contract with First Coastal Corporation for professional consulting services as it relates to the North Sea Beach Colony, Beach Erosion Control District Nourishment Project pursuant to Town Law 202B. Cindy? 44048, authorized supervisor to sign a contract with State University of New York at Stony Brook School of Health Professions. 443988 four, authorizes the supervisor to execute a contract with Lewis K. McLean Associates, PC, for professional services related to improvements at Red Creek Park in Hampton Bays. 44015, declare item surplus and authorize disposal of vehicles. 44014, recall and amend resolution 23-2023-833, authorize supervisor to sign agreement to lease the premises known as 271 Flanders Road, Riverside, New York, to Long Island Head Start Development Services, Inc., and to the Children's Museum of the East End. 44043 is amending the 23 <coughs> budget for various departments. 44005 authorizes the town to reimburse NIMER, the deductible for bodily injury and property damage claims. 44004, waive a portion of the showmobile fields for the San Gennaro Beach of the Hamptons. Um, anybody else co sponsor that one? No, I'll, I'll go on as a co sponsor. Do you have to recuse yourself on that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, 44057 uh, points Alexander. Sikorsky to Animal Control Officer 1, Physician of Public Safety. 44056 appoints 
Dana Padone to Animal Control Officer 1, Position in Public Safety, 43642, points Tristan Allen to Sanitation Helper Position in Pul Municipal Works, Waste Management Division, 44042, authorize the acceptance of funds from a New York State eminent domain account for property acquired <coughs> for the Southampton Bridgehampton Storm Drainage Improvement Project. And then we have some add ons. A bunch. Ten more. Uh, Tommy John, you got the first? Well, they are actually add, they're add ons with um, multiple uh, sponsors on it, but I am like a co-sponsor on all of them. Do you want to read them individually? Like the first one, you're the lead sponsor, um, but I am on there. These were not approved yesterday. Um, all right, so, so I'll read the first. Uh, and then John is the lead sponsor on the oh, second. So you just want to go by the... Um, yeah, we'll go okay, individually. We'll go by the, all right, so 43876 elects to consider formal zone change from CR200 to multifamily to facilitate development of 34 units of affordable rental housing at... One one zero zero majors path north. See, weren't we waiting on some we, comments? They did a they did a whole presentation with the CAC. It was a two hour presentation. And the CAC was okay with. They were okay with moving forward to an elect. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, all right, John. They definitely want more information, but okay. they understand that that's the only way they're the going to get the it. The moment will come. The process yeah. starts. <laughs> all right, uh, John. You got the next. Uh, Town Board Resolution ID 43965, a notice of public hearing to consider aquatic habitat restoration and non-point source abatement and control, pro and control projects proposed for 2023 <coughs> Community Preservation Fund CPF 20% Water Quality Improvement Plan funding. All right, Tommy John. 43975, a resolution of adoption amending Chapter 164-6.5 uh, penalties to increase a penalty for hazardous for hazardous materials. Uh, this is stored in residential properties. We had a public hearing on it. Yep. Uh, 43976, this is resolution of adopting amending chapter 164-6.4, hazardous accumulations to enhance enforcement ability. There was one addition that I'd like to uh, call the board's attention to, that is letter E uh, in section Two, two letter E <coughs> number four. Uh, in addition to uh, the exemptions, uh, it will not apply to agriculture and farmland properties. So you're adding, that's not in this, but you're adding that? That's an exemption. It's, it was added to it as an exemption. Yeah, for the, and for the storage and accumulation. Right. Of, yeah. right. right. So that's farms are... Yep, gonna be they're exempt. going to be storing yes. some. Yeah. Oh, that's the number manure four, manure exemption manure. number four. Horse manure or whatever. Yeah. This yeah. section shall not apply to agriculture and farmland properties. Right, right. The fourth exemption, okay. Nitrates and okay. so forth. Okay. All right, hey, John, you're the nice one. Uh, town board, am I on the right one? Town board resolution ID 44009, the 2023 second notice to bidders for Tiana Life Saving Station restoration. 44012, this is to amend the 2023 <coughs> Department of Land Management Building and Zoning Commercial Fee Schedule. This is to add a charge for EV charging stations. Yeah, I should be added to that. Kim, you got that? Got it. 44017, authorize a partial waiver for fire marshal fees for the 2023 Hampton Classic. Town Board Resolution ID 44018, authorized partial waiver of police fees for the 2023 Classic Hampton Classic Horse Show. Um, ID number 440. Oh, wait. wait one second. I, can there? I go on as co-sponsors on both of those? Uh, sure. Um, 44017 and 44018. Got it. All right. Go ahead, Tom. 44053, the authorized supervisor to exec execute a computer use agreement with M1 Security Solutions in furtherance of the professional services consulting contract. Cindy, or the next. Uh, resolution of adoption creating new chapter 314 entitled Moratorium on Battery Energy Storage Systems as per section 330-162.21 of the Southampton Town Code. Can we go now, can I be the lead sponsor on this one? Sure. As I was with the public hearing. Okay. 
Kim, you got that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, any questions on any of those? Questions on the agenda? Draft agenda? Okay, so we're good to publish? Okay, so we're gonna. We're ahead of schedule, maybe. <laughs> Did the best we can. Not bad. And you guys are all here and ready, so we might as well take you uh, early. So we're gonna move on to our. Uh, Joyce is on her way up. I just called and um, just, I don't know. Yeah, because it's important that she be part of this. All right, do you want to stall a little bit with some updates? Yeah, we could do that. You want to do the updates? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can. Uh, who wants to go? Just call, just call. Yeah, just call. Uh, I'll go. Okay. Last night we had an informal public hearing uh, in the town boardroom with uh, representatives from the village of North Haven, and they uh, presented. Uh, their plans on a park for Level 80 Powell property. Uh, we heard from the public. There are some uh, questions about the development of that uh, particular parcel. And uh, so the town of Southampton, as we are the, uh, the we own the fee and title of both parcels uh, that this park is being developed on, we had a public hearing last night. And it was good. A lot of people came out, good ideas. We are going to be having another one on Thursday. Uh, next week, the 24th at 6 o'clock in North Haven Village Hall. And then the Village of North Haven is going to adopt or, or they're going to go into their hearing and their processes. So it's an interesting way that the two municipalities work together to develop <coughs> this park over there. Anyone else? Um, last Saturday, Councilman Skiboni and I attended a meeting with the Tiana Beach Erosion Control District the and the Village of Quag. Mayor of Quag was there. There was a lot of residents there. Um, Jim and Kelly Doyle did a presentation on FIMP and what's needed to proceed. I think it started out a little <laughs> questionable, but towards the end, I think everybody kind of caught on and was on board. And it got to the point where they said, well, wait a second, you need everybody to sign up before we can proceed. And we said, yes. And they said, well, are you going to have a list of who the holdouts are? Because I think they're ready to, like, <laughs> knock on doors to make it happen. Yeah. But um, it was very it was very informative. Um, Aram Trichurian was there as well, went through the whole, whole program and the plan and answered a lot of questions that people had and I think alleviated a lot of concerns that people had. Good. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a very worthwhile, very well-attended event. It was a nice arc of... Realization. Yeah, I think yeah. The folks you could see pretty, it kind of. Yeah, pretty savvy group. They know that this yeah. is sure. to their uh, benefit. To, yeah, these to are all ocean front, and all of ours, really. Yeah, these are all oceanfront property owners, so yeah. they know. Uh, Jim, when do when are we scheduled to actually get to sand now? Uh, right now, it, it's more it's, it's more like 2025, fall of 2025. But it, what we talked about was, if we do acquire the easements, and they can't U.S. the Army Corps cannot start the project until we, all the easements are obtained. So that's was kind of the point of the conversation on Saturday morning was if, if we get full cooperation by all the property owners, if we get the easements signed earlier, we may be able to move it up, um, depending on the availability of the core of the core and the dredging. Because originally they were talking about more uh, in the 2024, late 2024 uh, fall. They try to do the work, then they, obviously they don't want to do the work during the summertime. So it'll either be scheduled for you know, at the earliest, it would be the fall of 2024 if somehow we were able to obtain all the easements. And the only way we're going to do that is if we get voluntary um, you know, compliance. execution by, right, compliance okay. by everybody. Um, if not, then we're talking probably at this point fall of 2025. <clears throat> you know, if we have to go through eminent domain, you know, the problem we have is that we have one judge in Suffolk County who handles all the eminent domain proceedings, and he also has a matrimonial calendar, you know, Judge Leo, so he's very busy. So, um, you know, that that'll that'll just take time, um, and but it's a, like Kelly did a great job in the presentation Saturday morning. She was really terrific, and Adam was. Uh, we kind of the three of us kind of, you know, played off each other a little bit, and I thought you know, it was good. Handled a lot of the well, questions. Originally, we had the pressure that we were 
holding up Montauk, right? Downtown Montauk, which yeah. is in desperate need. So they've peeled that off now. That's yeah. actually happening potentially this year, mm -hmm. in, the, a, in right. the winter of this year. Right. And I was with the Army Corps folks yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. really exciting. Right, they had a very you know, small amount of easements to obtain, but yeah, sure. And, they were able to and, tie in with the F FIMI, right. the Fire Island Merchants mm -hmm. Inlet mm -hmm. Project. So they, when that <clears throat> ocean dredge comes out, they're going to dispatch it to Montauk yeah. and do the Montauk piece. Right. And so it's no longer, they're not being held up by us. Right. And then one of the questions from, from they one of the... They easements already there. They, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah some, there was a small amount. Of a little bit of work already. they still have to do there, but they're expected to have everything in place for... A lot of it is public lands winter. that were you know, they're involved there, I believe, but... I think, I think there's going to be some holdouts. I think, you know, there were some yeah. people that didn't like the idea that scraping is gone forever. There were some people that didn't like the idea that the easements are forever and, you know, run with the land, and they thought it should be more like a 10 or 20-year easement. Yeah. Um, Questions about... Um, and that was the realization, is that once the Army Corps gets in to re-nourish the beach, then they are going to keep the beach re-nourished, and yeah. those easement, easements yeah. need to be in so place. Do, yeah, right, those questions about that and, and, and potential costs moving it's forward. Kind of, uh, you know, and then they, was, they, wanted, they wanted us to look into building like a two-foot seawall on the bay side so mm. that the dune road doesn't flood from the bay. One gentleman asked And, you know, so I told him if they, if they would reach out to Councilman Bouvier, he would just yeah. alleviate yeah, all their fears and tell them they won't have any property <laughs> in 20 years. So, so that's the whole, that's the irony of you know some of the pushback is if we don't get the easement there's no work if there's no work there's no property there 30 years from now it's right. all gone right. it's just right. so the part that they're worried about the right. core being able to come back and re-nourish in the future wouldn't even be there right no, i think most of the people got that they you know these are very sophisticated people and they they also <clears throat> were to realize that we were able to show them um, that really the easements that we will be acquiring here are pretty much from the foot of the toe of the dune out to the high water, yes. mean high water mark. So it's already encumbered by a public right away yeah. easement. You know. Did they, did so, they <coughs> talk about sea level rise in any respect as it regards to? No. <coughs> we really didn't get into the science. It was of all kind of a moot point. <coughs> yeah. Okay. They, they had questions about how they were going to contour the, the, the work, the, the sand, the dunes, and whatnot. And Aaron, Aaron was good about, you know. You know, we talked to him about that, and he also realized, you know, that listen, you, know, you go to East Sagaponic and Bridgehampton, are, you know, those homeowners are paying a lot of their own monies to do what the core is going to do here. They do want to know who's going to pay that fifteen percent going forward. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Well, it depends on where they are. In Quag, it's the village residents are paying. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to know if it would be a full town or if it would just be on like an erosion control like district a, a type town of setting. Like district. For yeah. us, everything Something else, <laughs> everything else is in ECDs, except mm -hmm. for maybe a, one small section of West Hampton, which right now isn't scheduled to get any sand. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the places that are scheduled to get sand and renourishment are all in ECDs. So it would be the ECDs funding that fifteen percent. The ECD is funding the fifteen percent. Yeah. Which is this is a piece of land in West Hampton between the villages, between West yes. Hampton Beach mm. and West Hampton Dunes. It's, it's like technically yards part something. of the project, yeah. but it's it's not. There's nothing happening there in, in the design, so they're not getting anything. So they don't, we don't get any easements there right now. Right, right now, yeah. There's there's areas of West Hampton Beach that we're not. Well, yeah, we're not, not a barrier. It's right. not a barrier. Right. What, so it's that not a barrier. So it's not. Dunes area they're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Well, between you know, the, that, the two that used to be a that was an inlet at one time. Yeah. Well, well that's all. They kept filling that, it in every year. Right. That beach area there that's because true. of the breach and all that. The beach is is completely owned by the state of New York. Yeah. That, that, that whole beach in West Hampton Beach Pikes Dunes is all state of New York, so they can. Pikes Inlet at the time. They don't need any. They don't need to acquire easements there. The it's years. worth looking into the legal side of that because they established West Hampton Dunes as a result of of other, other breach. Of, of monies to repair and sure. to restore that area. Right. So, uh, and I don't know where that actually ended up, but you know, I know they benefited significantly from that. Right. Um, oh, sure. But I don't know what the. Well, as I said, the state of New York owns all the beachfront there now, so they don't need, if they are to do any work there, they don't need to acquire reasons. Mm -hmm. it's already there. All right, so you guys, we've stalled longer than we needed to. We have Janice yeah. here. So. <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah. What happened? No. There was an accident on camera 30. Oh, no. Oh, I just missed it. But I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. 
All right, good. So, Janice, I don't know where you want to well, stand. I'll just quickly, yeah, like you introduce quickly introduce this because there's been a, uh, there's been sort of a lot of talk going on in the West Hampton area about this particular proposed project. And uh, I kind of rumor mills sort of sprung up. And so I asked Janice if you guys could come down here and sort of describe exactly what it is that, that's going on there. Um, and we'll take it from there and where, where you are and describe what you're proposing. Yes, so the applicants, uh, you may recall, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, they had, we had a prior work session a while ago uh, when the new owners came in and said, what would you like to see here? What, what do you, you know, are there any opportunities for us to, you know, do anything here? Um, so we, we did mull around Actually, you may recall, like doing an opportunity zoning for these sand runs to move out of mining operations into different uses that are sustainable. So we, um, this particular property is um, in the core of the Pine Barrens, though. So it's a different uh, animal, and so uh, so John Schneider and George Duke are representing the applicants. And you guys can come up here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think it's better to hear it from them, yeah. what they want to do. It, it, at the same time, they, after that work session, we really didn't go forward with that opportunity zone. So just too many things happening at once here. Um, and they've well, since applied for a grade adjustment. And that I think we just want to understand what's going on with this grade adjustment, what it's this whole process about. What a grade yep. adjustment? They want to Meaning to fill in this. Uh, so I think it's best to hear from them. Will um, be subject to some sort of <coughs> DEC It's a P DEC Part yeah. 360 yeah. permit, and so Don't but fall. that permit <coughs> process had a public portion that we attended and heard some things, and some community members heard some things. So I think it, we we called them up and said, "Why don't you come in?" And we'd rather hear it directly from you than secondhand we, from a, um, a wait, public board. Where's the property located? It's on on Summit Boulevard, uh, North, Old North Country Summit Road, Boulevard. North Summit Boulevard. There's like a railroad right, where the railroad area. tracks Sorry, are. I, I think I, I think I know what's up. Yeah, do you want a map? I can bring it up on the computer, yeah. actually. I'll do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. How many acres total? 39 acres? 39? Something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I think the pit is. Maybe you just want to go through so introductions? And yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I can give a, just a yeah. contextual yeah. background. Yeah. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is George Duke. I'm with Connell Foley, law firm of Connell Foley. Last time I was here, I was with Brown, Duke, and Fogel. It's now it's a different <laughs> firm. But anyway, same person. Um, I'm Matt Merrill. I'm from PW Grocer Consulting. We're the engineers for the project. Um, I'm uh, John Schneider with uh, McBride Consulting. Um, and uh, we're part of the team working on uh, public outreach. Um, and uh, just by the way, on, a, on an off note, having uh, worked uh, 20 years ago on the FIMP plan when I worked for Tim Bishop. It was fascinating. <laughs> it's like a, it was a real like walk down memory lane. So, um, uh, <laughs> FIMP's been going on it's, it's, since. Uh, there's like a Groundhog Day. I'll just, since I'll the just, early 1960s, believe it or not. Well, and I remember talking back in the day with Fred Thiel and Skip Heaney, and they were their things from the 60s. I mean, it's, yes. Yeah. Anyway. It was a walk down memory lane. It's actually so. happening now. So yeah. thank that, you. That was one of the it's questions happening. the other day. Thank like, you for this that. actually happening. I'm like, yeah, it's actually happening. Yeah, it's now. been on geological time. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rebecca Sinclair, I'm also with McBride. Also have um, some easement in FIMP experience myself, so also enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> Good morning, Greg Levine with McBride Consulting. Okay. Um, so just I'll just say a couple of words on context. So when we were here last time, so the ownership of this former mine site, it's the former West Hampton mining site, um, it was subject to enforcement with DEC. So there were piles of materials there that were illegally dumped, not managed properly, so they were just sitting there. So it's fallow. Our client came in, there's no connection to the prior ownership. They did not put those piles, but the idea was they <coughs> negotiated, and I was involved in this, that's why I know, we negotiated it with the DEC, a consent order, to allow us to process the material that's there, remove it, dispose of it properly and fill the hole. So that was the original context of the consent order with DEC. DEC said that's great, we love the idea, however you need to also apply as a condition of the consent order, which we can share, you must apply for a grade adjustment permit pursuant to Part 360 of DEC regulations. So that 
grade adjustment permit application just went in and there was a public hearing on it. And the idea is that that will be permitted, the grade adjustment will be permitted by the state DEC, and that's why it's going through the seeker review under the state's program um, to allow the hole to be filled up. But as part of that, there's a processing component. So it's not just fill it up with clean material, it's process the material, make sure the clean goes in the hole, anything bad gets removed, et cetera. So that's the technical aspect of it. But that's an interim facility that will be on the site pursuant to a Part 360 grade adjustment permit for then that's what's getting permitted. There's no separate facility and there's no <coughs> subsequent redevelopment plan. That was what was you need right. And I'm sorry, and just for context, right now the only the only thing that the only um, application <coughs> that we are seeking uh, is the part sixty uh, the part three sixty permit uh, from the DEC. Do you need anything from the Pine Barrens? Yes. Yeah. yeah. To do that? Uh, oh. They do think you need uh, something from Oh. Them. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> well, I was just there yesterday. It's, it's in, okay. uh, it's in a core uh, preservation. It is in a core preservation area, so. So yeah. to fill the hole. So any, act oh, just to be clear, any activity that's happening there now is being done under the consent order. Yeah. And I think so, we'd also want to closely yeah. look at, like, that consent order is in compliance with state DEC, so jurisdictionally, I don't know what the commission could require at this time. Well, it's a, re it's a remediation right. effort under a consent order, right. so it's, yeah, it's exempt from. So we have one map on one screen. It's up there, Janice. I'm on, sorry. I'm just screen. trying to yeah, remember that's, which. That's, that's, oh, that's our recreational park up there. Future recreational park. Further east, Janice. Further east. I, no, I think yeah, yeah. You had it before. All of the railroad tracks. Yeah, that's right. Right there. Right there. That's it. This. Yeah. This and this and this. I mean, not that. A little piece of that by the railroad. You had the one labeled 76. Yes, the one below the. <coughs> yes, that. That's big nurse. And that little one, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, just this. And then, yeah. And they just recently bought the one you just highlighted before. The Marie Wilkins. Is that. Okay. John, is that Pete and Son? I'm sorry? Is that Pete and Son right there? It's. Yeah, uh, I didn't Jason hear you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pete, Pete, Pete and Son. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's so were there Pine Barrens credits attached to this? So the concern with the, um, like something that I know. Yeah. Thinking, well, some things here are just that we, we also are in support of the cleanup efforts. It's to what end is the um, mine being filled back in for what? Mm -hmm. And that may be development and that is subject to Pine Barren authorization because this is the core. The other side of this is also that the Pine Barrens Commission is concerned that this, the C and D component of the 360 permit requires their approval. And so that's something you can talk to them about. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe. Because we're not, and that's part of the community consternation is that what is this? <coughs> this bringing materials here to be tested is problematic to us, right? Like we would want clean fill, obviously, <laughs> but the testing and bringing potentially anything here in the core is at issue. Yep, and it's not yeah. a retail C&D facility, just to be clear. Yeah, I think we want to hear more about yeah. the C&D component yeah, and what is that and that. what would right. you, you know, <coughs> rather than us speaking for you, we would just use <coughs> okay. to talk about it. Sure, so a lot of development projects will already test the material, so the majority of material we anticipate to be received at the facility uh, will be tested prior to receipt at the facility if there are like kind of um, smaller generating projects we have a consolidation area proposed and then the testing would occur on a one per 1,000 yard basis uh, in our plan but the majority of materials would be qualified general fill under the old part 360 regulations um, they would be deemed that way prior to receipt of the facility in addition it would be uh, clean concrete um, brick and natural stone materials all of which are considered inert by DEC and would not need to be tested. So all the materials that, uh, that will be brought to the site will be clean materials. Um, they will be inert materials. And there's a small component in which uh, the same materials that we're going to be bringing in for this great adjustment will synergize with the client's core business. So there is an aspect of repurposing maybe some of the clean concrete for use on their, their site projects. But like I said, most of this material will be qualified clean material before it comes in. So this shouldn't 
it shouldn't be uh, an issue of contamination, especially considering the removal of the dredge spoils that are currently uh, is being undergone on the property right now. The clients have dredge spoils. Uh, well, the, the existing materials that were deposited on the property from the previous owners, um, some of them were considered dredge spoils. Mm -hmm. um, they exceeded the beneficial use criteria for reuse on the site. So the, in order to get uh, a permit approved by DEC, they had to enter that consent order. The consent order required the removal of about 26,000 yards of material after, after we did the testing. So these clients are looking to remove those materials and... 26 thousand yards it's yeah it's a it's a considerable effort that they're gonna have to for to just get to kind cool. of square cool. one so what happened this was a sand mine it was a and sand mine it had a part 360 registration with the state. It um, without well, doing a reclamation plan it, it that's well that gets interesting I, I think in I think the first permit was issued in 1984 for the permit for the uh, mine permit but as of right now, there was never, the reclamation was never complete. So it's still technically an active sand mine until the reclamation is complete. And this would be part of that reclamation. But the prior owners but the, got but determinations, accepted material, and never handled it and got rid of it the way they were supposed to, pursuant to the bud. So, mm -hmm. so it's out there. It's still being viewed as an active sand mine? It, it, well, it hadn't, has not been reclaimed. It has no Permits. It has no permit, but it hasn't been reclaimed. So if you were to look at like the DEC database, it would still be displayed on like the information mapper as an active sand mine because it hasn't been formally reclaimed. When was the last time it was active? When was the last time it was active? <coughs> I think, uh, I mean, the consent order was 2009, so it's, it's probably been okay. 13 yeah, years. Yeah, so it's, what they've been so you can't now. mine sand there because you have no. No, that's not. Yeah, that's not. So you're that's not you're basically for a while. trying to finish a reclamation project with the DEC, and then with the end goal of what? Right now, there's no development proposed. So all the other well, like, the reason it sat fallow for years because everybody looked to try to get the reserves. Everybody else looked at it and said, "Oh, here's a mine. There's maybe some reserves there. Let's try and get it." sell the reserves to pay for the reclamation sure. right that that's that was the game and that's why it didn't work our client doesn't do that they're not mining people they're land earth movers so they have a lot of material that's clean that they can't find a home for so they internally in their business can make an economic model where they can have they have a home for a lot of material and that's different than a lot of the other economic you know, they were looking at it like, okay, how many thousand cubic yards of sand are left, and maybe we can sell that, and that's not their business model. So, so we want to fill that's what's this big, big hole. Fill the hole, because mm -hmm. they can make it work, the because that's part of their business. Their but then at the, and what's the end of after? They don't have, right now it's zoned residential, so it's, well, it's in the core. It's, it's in the core preservation, core. and, and are there they don't have. And credits intact on this? Yeah. Yes, yeah. there would be development rights. There's development um, rights. I mean, you know, primary credits so would have to be Typically, the property issued. would not be considered developable. It's in the core. Right. Um, it has transferable rights. Yeah, we haven't looked at, you know, the... So for us, normally, these properties would then revert to some sort of natural state. Um, Usually, you sort of stabilize the slopes, right? Have a replanting or revegetation. And what's the usual grade adjustment with a mine? Is it they vary across the whatever board, the or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So your grade is. adjustment is is how much, and and the, can you describe that, like the extent of what you're looking to? And you're not do? trying to turn it into a transfer station. No, no. We can't. <laughs> yeah, we no. can't. Okay. It's not even. Yeah, I don't know why. The question I had. Uh, the transfer station's that, down the road. Do you anticipate yeah. any processing? You know, the inert material. Are you going to? Oh, not, oh not maybe gonna, screening or crushing of the yeah, material. That's what I was. <clears> yeah, <throat> there will be screening and crushing of the soils. And, and, and concrete. That would be soil for the property not to be taken off the property. Uh, there is there is a small amount of soil that they think that they might need a soil blend for a project. They might want to divert some of that material, but the vast majority of the material will be used in the grade adjustment. Okay. But the materials that are brought in are also subject to the DEC chain of custody yeah, so, rules so, and all so, of that. So what I also wanted to kind of I used to work for DEC. I was uh, an inspector for the Solid Waste Division, and, and projects like these were, were I'm not going to say they were common, but they were probably, I, I was the monitor in Kings Park. There was two or three facilities in Kings Park. DEC is very involved in these kinds of projects. Um, 
the way it works is there will be individual loads staged from each truck along the periphery of, of the mine uh, slope. We would flag each, we have a log book for each load that comes in. We have a flag that's put at each individual load. Each load will be inspected by a DEC inspector and approved prior to being incorporated into the grade adjustment. So there is a very high level of oversight by DEC. They will be at the site regularly. Um, the client has committed to an environmental monitor program, which means that they have to actually pay an additional, f usually these inspections by DEC are, are part of your permit. But for these guys, they're going to actually pay an additional fee to have more frequent monitoring so that DEC can come to the site once or twice a week to inspect those loads before they're able to incorporate Which allows them to move faster. So yeah, that's too. Just cameras. Just cameras. Like, yeah. yeah, there's like Wi-Fi hookups and then it's heavily monitored. Can you describe the extent of the, you know, act, you the, know? the grade adjustment? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's pretty much to the, exist, the previously existing grade, there's a slight pitch on the property, but uh, the depth, I think, ranges between like 28 and 35 feet or so throughout the property. So they would be looking to uh, in, uh, do the grade adjustment so that it's pretty much at the natural grade. Although we do recognize that we want to be timely with this five-year limit and that based on potential development down the road, we may want to reduce, we may want to continue to have a, a bit of a depression uh, on the property, but right now, as proposed to DEC, it's, it's too great, the existing great. And th that's the thing, the potential development part is, is a hardship to the Pine Barrens Commission. Right. Like, there is no potential development. Like, you just have to be really clear on that. Like, that, that's the thing about that. Other than agriculture, right? right? Or um, I think they may entertain some type of solar potentially, uh, at least we do. Yeah, that's what's written in our plan. It's, okay. it's uh, alternative energy is, was a part of it, and I think maybe maybe there's a potential reference to cold storage because it was during COVID and there was the vaccines and the requirement for more cold storage facilities. It was an idea, and they've had discussions with you guys, I think, about um, you know hemp farming or the dirt bike tracks in the past. Yes, yeah, that we, would, we yeah, that would have, have to come from the town. From, that's right, not from right. us. Like, we right. don't have we, any development like proposals. Things like biochar, things that are sustainable in nature, right. are probably more more likely to be acceptable. And certainly from primary but, regulation and our own regulation, that, would, that probably would be the only thing acceptable to do that. But to get it to that point is important in how you're doing that, what the content of the bill and things like that. I want the community to understand that you know, the process here is not, oh, we're just going to bring a bucket and fill, and fill it up. That's not how it works. So we want to be sure that we're protecting our groundwater uh, in that respect, and that's why, why you're doing it. You so I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing for you. I, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm getting a lot of head nods, so <laughs> I, I hope that's okay to say it that way. Well, and, and the other concern is sort of truck traffic for the community. Can you speak to that? Because we really don't want people to be having, you know, Tons of trucks and activity. The tough entrance. Day in and day out. So you know, yeah. uh, how are we that. going to plan for that? And the DEC is the uh, lead agency here because the town has no permitting here, and you haven't applied for a hardship to the Pine Barrens, so there is no other, you know, agency that would be lead agency. But we would like DEC to ensure the truck. So we truck. took a hard look at that, okay. and Matt can. Speak to that. All right, I mean, we have a letter from BHB. Right, yeah. I was going to say, uh, there was a recent study performed by BHB comparing it to background traffic levels on, on uh, Old Country Road, and the determination was, I think it was, was it less than a... It's less than 1%. 1%. We'll share you the letter. We were actually submitting it today. Yeah. So we had uh, BHB, the traffic consultant, look at all the background traffic, look what this incremental increase, even assuming when you're doing the secret review, you have to assume the worst, right? Mm -hmm. We're assuming the most traffic, the most use. May or may not be to that level, but assuming that it's worse, it's still like this, it was less than 1%. It, whatever it was, it didn't rise to the level of even warranting um, a traffic study, or it, it's certainly not a significant impact. So, And we talked about that with DEC. Are, are there, as well. there, Jazz, refresh my memory, are there there's materials that were put there a long time ago? that are above grade, and that's part of what you were talking about, to have those tested, see if they could be either ground or... Right, all, all the materials on the site, I think that there were 100,000 yards of material above grade. They were tested on a one per 1,000 frequency. So these guys did 100 samples uh, on that material. 
part of what was we had to do when we were brought onto the team was analyze that information, identify the potentially contaminated materials or, or that exceed the beneficial <coughs> use criteria, um, and then we we got in a plan approved by DEC to remove uh, by drawing out the hotspots and based on visual confirmation in the field, um, and then place that material in what we call the consolidation staging area. Essentially, made a concrete tipping bunker and put all that material in there, and they're keeping that material covered until um, well, they have to remove it at a frequency that's prescribed in the consent order with DEC. I believe it's at this point. I don't know if it's two fifty a week or five hundred a week, but um, uh, it's in the, in so the, uh, it's in the, the, the vision is not trucks coming in and out on a perpetual. No, basis. they want to consolidate that. So, so when this operation becomes. <coughs> fully operational, they're going to be bringing the material in, they're going to be using those same trucks, loading the materials that were uh, impacted from in, in that consolidation area, put into the trucks and sent to the disposal <coughs> facility. So there's only going to be the trucks coming in with the clean beneficial use materials and coming out with the waste. Okay. So Jazz, I have a question for you. So we really have, there's no permits needed from us, we really have no say in this. Like you're involving us to let us know what's going on at the site pretty much. So I mean, I'm just asking this question for the for the purpose of if the community says to us, we don't want this, we're not permitting anything. Like it's not. Well, that's not the thing, right? So when someone comes to us with a uh, uh, so ordered, you know, consent order from a judge, it's not our project. We typically say, okay, you know, have at it. Uh, they came to us about a temporary trailer. Um, we don't provide building permits for temporary trailers. We told them to go to the health department, so that is important. That that is all. Mm -hmm. insured to be correct um, the a building permit for a temp for a temporary trailer we don't do it is a nice one I saw a picture <laughs> and saw it um, but uh, because that would be development uh, and the Pine Barrens would be interested in that so they would like to speak to you about that mm -hmm. you know like if that's not temporary then that's part of your I think we just need, uh, and I think they agree, the Pine and Commission and, and the, uh, as you know, the chair is the regional assistant, regional director for DEC, because he's going to look at that consent order and how that jives with the hardship mm -hmm. for, for the Pine Barrens, so that both of those state agencies are on the same page, you know, how to handle that. Um, and, they, and that's really a state issue. So for us, we... We we're kinda we can't do anything because it's the core, so we don't have any ability to like require a site plan or mm -hmm. you know, things along those lines are not allowable. I just want that clear to the community. So they're not yeah. coming to us saying we don't want this in our neighborhood. Stop it. Like there's nothing yeah. for us right. to stop. This is a, a state level initiative to effectuate a cleanup, but it is Concerning in them of we don't want to what end we want to understand what that is right. if you are having an end in mind Then you should make that hardship sure. permit and we should all be aware of right. what that is So everybody knows what's what um, if there is no end and it's just all the end is a reclamation And that's the end of it. That's then that's the that's end what we, you're telling we can't us. Um, and, and just so you know, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but sure, the issues ahead. you're raising were raised by the DEC Good. on our call this week so those so that's actually part of this process so we're going to communicate what we learned here with DEC and make sure because the issue is is there another part 360 facilities is there a and &E facility is this going to be a standalone facility and that's not the model that's just not the model so that's what I think what everybody's keying yeah we don't on. want yeah. this to be a new business it's use like, oh, that goes on there's, 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 there's an end date like right. there's a yeah. five year there's it's a, done. It's a, right it's, it's not it's, these permits are for terms right it's a term permit DEC Balance, they have a, there's a life of a mine right at the end of the life is supposed to be reclamation now the prior owner didn't do the reclamation plan so you're this works that. for this I think client the town would likely view that as the mine is being closed the mine is being terminated and reclaimed and that's all in the DC's purview what happens after it's been reclaimed it's in the Pine Barrens core and you guys need to look at what those hardship standards are they're not going to be easy to get a different use on that property but I'm not saying impossible but it, but certainly challenging well I, I just just to clarify again and thank you Cindy because it, the community is one of the reasons I asked for you guys to be here because there's a lot of confusion um, to me <laughs> what you're doing is there's a sand mine that's not an operational sand mine but it, it was at one time it's been sitting there for a long time uh, it was a, it was a 
dump site from the past with materials that we haven't identified. It's been there for a long time. This is an opportunity for the DEC to come do its job, uh, which is to look at those materials, identify what is, shouldn't be there and take it away, and what should be there, put it back to help to, to reclaim the mine, and that's not, not to reclaim it as an operational mine, it's basically to shut it down, turn it back into a, as what it was originally as best as possible, reclaim the land, and take away some of these pollutants that have been sitting there for years and years and years and years, uh, and, and we have the DEC doing that job, and we're kind of watching as a town as this happens. Well, yeah, we're, we're like listed as an involved agency, they're a lead agency, but I think that we can still identify all the issues and sure. give it to them, and they're going to have to do that secret analysis. Like you said, you have a letter about <coughs> traffic. We would say traffic's a definite concern, noise, dust, anything related to the neighborhood and people. How is that um, property access that's up against the so rural that, trucks? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. you get the truck, how do you get the trucks in and out? Same way that have been going for whatever. You know, is there an access road? Yeah, yeah. there's an access there's road. There's a crossing. Along and the railroad tracks? Or? It's, it, no. It goes a little north it, of it. Parallel it to the railroad it, tracks. Right. Yeah. yeah so you so cross the like tracks and then you kind of go through the woods a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and, we know, I mean, and we know a neighbor <coughs> complaining. Yeah, there's a, we all have received those documents. And Mr. Gaza has expressed his uh, concerns and he is that uh, you know there's some purported access issues so yep uh, yeah I, I mean I, I don't have a final answer we're drafting an opinion and you know we'll clarify I mean uh, certainly we believe we have access um, it's not just our site that has access over that same road it, there's a residence that also has access right. to yeah, be the DEC yeah. requiring that as well yeah so yep. we're back to that Yep, I just don't have a specific answer for you now. I mean, obviously, our position is we certainly have access. Well, if you're going to be bringing in all those trucks of yeah. material in and out. And, and what right. is that schedule in and out? You know, we keep hearing like it's a lot, but place. then you just said it's not. Is, well, we have, the, is the, yeah. uh, we have the specifics. Yeah. Like a number? Of yeah, trucks like, you know, do you have, and yeah, does so it have to be so many? Like, what's, why is it, I heard a lot, but maybe it's not that much. So, so it's, it's, what we propose is an average of 35 trucks per day which is three and a half trucks an hour over the 10 hour working day. Um, the maximum we propose at the site would be 50 trucks, 50 trucks being five trucks an hour. Um, no. That, I, I don't feel like that's as, as evidenced by the VHB traffic study. It's, it's not really a significant impact to the community as defined by, by the New York State DEC standards that are you know, in the EAF and but I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to kind of explain it. It's 35 trucks. It, it, to so me, how long of a period? It's, it's going to be over the five year permit. So it would be. So for five years, 30 trucks a day? Yeah. I live on a road with an active mine, and I can tell you that the worst part is when they come out full and there will be no trucks coming out full from the site I'm imagining. Well, the official yeah, yeah. part yeah. when they're removing the, oh, when they're the removing, bad stuff. But then when they're, but they're bringing a limited in, amount, but there will be. It won't be. Because I mean, that's honestly that's the worst part when you get stuck behind a full truck trying to get up to speed. Mm -hmm. Other than that? So mostly there will be full trucks coming in, right? You're bringing material in. Yes. Yeah. But then you'd be... But then you're going to be removing the waste over the... I think it's only structured over... Less than two years to remove the 26,000 yards of material. I, I want to say it's about a year and a half. So there would only be waste coming out of the facility for the first year and a half to remove the um, potentially contaminated material. Or the Where is that material going to end up? Um, it's going to go to an authorized facility. I, what we've been, who we've been working with is Pacilico. They have a wash plan over in Farmingdale. Um, they can accept materials that exceed beneficial use criteria. Essentially what they do is, is wash away the silts and clays and have clean sand residuals and then they reuse that in their concrete production. Okay. So 26,000 yards is coming out mm -hmm. and 26,000 plus yards is going in? Uh, the number over the five years will be about 800,000 cubic yards. Coming in. in. Coming in to, to, to fill, to the, fill the hole, yeah. Wow. It's mm. all the water material. <laughs> and so this company that you're working for has that much material? Yeah. Clean material that it wants well, to get rid of? Over, these, over they, projects. Yeah, I mean, over not projects. Like one they don't, not like right now they have that amount of material, but, you know, they have 
told me that on several okay. occasions somebody approaches them, I have 50,000 yards of clean fill, I, I want to be able to take it somewhere, do you have a use for it? And we don't have the permit yet, so we can't accept that material. Um, but these, these uh, projects, it'll, it'll come in bunches like that. We're expecting 30, 50,000 yards from individual projects. Um, Tested previously, yes, but not yes. being brought and decided, oh wait, this is actually contaminated, we gotta bring it out. No, no, no. Okay. of that scale, generally, I mean, custody. that's important. Yes, Clean. generally DEC has a provision that if a project generates more than 300 cubic yards, it needs to be qualified before it's received at the site. Okay. So those kinds of large projects, which is where gonna be the vast majority of the materials that are gonna be received at the site will be tested. Um, at the generating site prior to being shipped to the facility. And, and then, then shipped with the chain of custody so that there's... Yep, there's yep. there will be a, um, tracking documents that we have proposed to, for Just want to stress that. Yeah. 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 Is yeah. there anything, you said there's residences on the road that goes in and then there hasn't been any activity at the site for 13 years and obviously that number of trucks will put an undue burden on that road. Is there a plan to, you know, fix that road or improve it once you're done or through the course of the time you're there? That would be the, there's an unpaved roadway. Okay. Yeah, that's right the, now. It causes issues. Well, to access that, there's that, there's the little a little triangle. Yeah. And then you're going to have to deal with the MTA as well, I'm sure, because <laughs> uh, you, you need to cross that, that crossing at some point with those weights. I would just, you know, I'm not sure what, what that was built for there, but right now, there is traffic going in and out of there. Is the DEC considering what you want to do as a reclamation project or as a waste facility? Great adjustment under Part 360. That's, that's kind of there. defined it's in both. Kind of, yeah, it's a weird hybrid. You want to say, because if you looked at it, okay, you, you need a place for fill to go. Right. It's a material, so you're sort of dump. It's a dump in a way. You're dumping it in the hole there. Right. Um, and so that the DEC would regulate that as a sort of a landfill site, not for MSW but for fill. Right. Um, yet, if it was a reclamation, we would look at it as just a continuation of the mine toward the life of mine, not as a different use. So that's kind of I'm curious as the DEC is viewing it as a different use or as or just a reclaiming of a mine. In, with the mine the reclamation plan being to fill the hole. It's kind of both, like, technically, um, because you have the, the outstanding, like I said, it's, it's not a reclaimed mine, so they have to perform the reclamation. But at the same time, a Part 360 permit, a Part 360 permit is a solid waste <coughs> management facility permit. There are different categories for different kinds of facilities that are regulated by Part 360. One of them would be a landfill. The landfill is in the Part 362 regulations. This is a, a Part 367.17 non-specific facility. When 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 they're doing these uh, like a grade adjustment permit, they don't consider it a landfill if it's consisting of purely clean and inert materials. Because right now, ordinarily, a landfill would have a liner mm -hmm. um, and except right. you know. And normally, a reclamation wall. plan wouldn't require you to fill the hole. But you guys right, because it would just be the, the slopes. You just the slopes. slopes and right. And but what you do the have koi pond material koi there that are these, unidentified. Correct. Yeah, the bad stuff you have to get rid right of. Them. To me, that's a benefit because it's been there for so long. We're going to be able to. We're going to be able to at least remove that material. Not well, yeah, that's, that's part of the problem. It's not, it's not only did they not reclaim, but they. Well, they fill. Like but there's got to be a community. Eight hundred thousand cubic material. yards of material right. coming yeah. in over five years. There's definitely a, a got to be a community impact to that. You know, people are going to want to know about dust. People are going to want to know about trucks and impacts to roads, particularly driveways and things like that. So, yeah. um, I just want to say, I mean, we in the in the <clears throat> excuse me application though, it is explicit to address all of these things: traffic, noise, yep. dust, what's going in, how it's going to be sorted. Um, so, you know, we're here today sort of a very high level describing what's happening, but, you know, for months now there's been this extent, there's a soil management plan. I mean, everything that needs to be studied has been studied. There's been a supplemental traffic. So to the extent that this is information has been available to, you know, any involved agency as well as the public, and we had public hearing, we provided feedback from the public hearing to DEC that they're reviewing that and the questions that were submitted. Um, there's, been, there's been a very open level no, of communication. I'm not that. It's just yeah. whether it's a change of use and 
whether that has the necessary sign-offs from the town and the fine barons. Yeah, because it's sort of a C and D operation is part of that. It's a C and D permit. Yeah, well, I'd like to view it as a just a reclamation project. You know, right. reclamation project. But it's well, C and D to facilitate the reclamation. I mean, right. we're not C and D for, for for retail. We're not. There's all a lot of things. Where it's not. And the thing it is is that it, the C and D facilitates this this great adjustment, right? And that is that is it. That's to the extent uh, necessary. And what? who decides how high it goes up, yeah. like yeah. where right. it gets Right, where because I have to think about other mines as well might want similar relief. And like how do you, you know, just the grade of existing grade or natural grade is the target That's, or, you know, like. Well, just to be clear, this is not an operating mine. No. It was a long time ago, but right. there's no op permitted no, operating no. mine. Yep. Right. Not only that, but the, can, can it actually the brought bad stuff in. It's yeah, so, right, exactly. Yeah. So how do we determine? Right now, the the goal is to grade. To that's, grade, and that's right, based yeah. on there's there's two different heights on each side of the pit. I believe on one side it's like 43 feet AMSL, and on the other side it's 41. So depending on on where we're filling to, it's it's varying from 33 to 41, and there will be just a consistent grade that goes across, so that you're you're matching the existing grades at the top of uh, you know the mine pit. And that's part of your permit with the DEC? Yes, yeah. What's the benefit of, of bringing it up to grade? What's the, uh, if you're not, if you don't yeah. know what you're right using. Well, that's, we have material. That's the business model. I mean, we're not, they're not hiding that at all. That's the business model that works. If it was trying to get the scavenge, the remaining res reserves, that obviously that model didn't work, and that's why it sat there with the contaminated material for, you know, years. So this model works. It's sort of the opposite of mining. It's, it really is, and that's why you've seen, unmining. I know that several other um, mining operators had been through that site several times, and it just never could make it financially feasible. Well, what so. if someone said, well, we only want you to fill it up halfway, or something Who like would, that? I mean, I think they're Whoever. open to it. You know what I mean? If, if, if there was an opportunity right now, the goal is that's their home for it. That's how they make the financial aspects of this work. If the town came in and said, "Okay, we have, we're going to rezone, we're going to do something else," I think they're open to other recommendations, mm -hmm. but that's not permissible right now. You know, so certainly open to. So the plan right now is just to get it to grade and let it go back down. Yeah, we're constrained yeah. by what's permitted. You know, right. so. If and again, right now the project is the project. All it is is it's reclamation. It's bringing it to grade, and but there really is no. Yeah. We've we talked there's about there's no second project. There's, there's no, no second, second project. project. No second project. <laughs> At the end of this regrading plan, did the DC signing off as that being reclaimed at that point? Yeah, not reclaimed. Uh, the permit would be closed, right? Well, the, the permit, the solid waste management facility will be closed, but also the would they the mining, delist? I guess you're right. Yeah, it'd be delisted. So they would accept yeah. it as part of the reclamation of the land. So it could be yeah. used. If so, you can get permits to do something else, it, at that point, could be used for something else. Yes, it'll be, it'll be grass surface at the end. Uh, that wasn't explicitly written in the plan, but it can certainly be. Well, the core sure. of Pymarins, they would want a plan. That's the other side of this. Plan, yeah. You know, they really would want to be involved in the, uh, what the real yeah. vegetation uh, goals yeah. are there. Yeah. And, uh, and stormwater management. Or, or there's, there's a trough area there too. Right. It's pretty. It's, uh, it's kind of an interesting geological. So. Can those five-year permits be extended? Yes, they they could ordinarily. Um, it'd just be a permit renewal from DEC, <coughs> which would be less restrictive. It wouldn't be another public comment per se um, in that instant uh, instance, but. It's so then, the target of that many trucks, like, why not do you know? Sort of less over time, but if you know that you can get extended, you know what I mean. Period. You know what I mean, so that it's less impactful. It's going to be supply and demand, essentially, right? Some, some well, yeah, demand. that's why we have a 50 truck peak and a 35 truck average because we don't anticipate to be able to regularly receive materials on a daily basis at that level. It's going to have to come based upon you know they get that contract for 50,000 yards. They're going to bring that in, no more than the 50 truck max. Not but too cheap. But there will be times where there might not be another generating project bringing material, and there will be kind of lapses in in materials being received at the site. Uh, I've had some conversations with the regional attorney for DEC, but 
what what is their motivation in this project? Is such is the removal of the contaminated soils? That's their main goal. I mean, it, yeah. That, as far as regrading, is it something? The, and sorry, you know, former employee there. May, and I said maybe this might be a DC question, but regrading is that something? Is that a benefit? Do they look at that as a beneficial thing, or is that just is that more for the motivation of the, of the property owner? Yeah. Um, question. I, I don't think that there's like an explicit benefit, but you do all. I think that it also needs to be considered that when these guys are removing 26,000 yards of material, I mean, a conservative estimate would be for trucking to a facility like Basilico and disposal would be $100 a ton. Right, and so right, these guys are right. going to have to invest right. almost $3 million right. in, in disposal and trucking. Right. And to that's important to the DC to get this material out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that, I, that I, know I see it as a benefit to the town, Jim, in, in some ways, obviously, that we can get rid of some of these materials that have been... Oh, yeah, no question. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But also, in addition to that, when we start looking at, at, at areas like this where we want to do sustainable projects, uh, anything from solar to biochar, whatever, whatever that might be, part of that has to be graded. And I, yep. you know, okay. this right. could be a model, perhaps, yeah. to as right. a way to do that. Right. Um, and, and I know we've talked about some other end uses. We, There's no we, substation there. Either. We did move, <laughs> no. and then we came <laughs> to find these before. Right, so right, that was right. The right. You talked about warehouses. We looked at it in the whole thing. <laughs> we've had we've had discussions on a lot of different end uses on this property, and then of course complicating it now is the fact that it's in the core. But we talked about warehouses. We talked about other. other when we initially, well, for any sand mine, we were saying if they, we right. can get a path it's away ATV. from mining, what are legitimate uses that people need, right. like a lot of uh, landscapers need <clears throat> yard space, a lot of people need, you know, certain different things. So we were talking about that across the board, across the town, to motivate places like Sandland or others to, to when they're done, you know, mm -hmm. to move to different uses. Those right. places are not necessarily in the core like this is, so it's a little right. different here. Yeah. Um, and that requires a added level of scrutiny and permission from the primaries commission yeah. so and that's a whole hardship and there must be a public benefit involved in order for them to uh, right. yeah mm -hmm. to what i've seen in almost every sand mine that, that i've been dealing with um, is the reclamation ends up being some type of lake or ponds fishing ponds that's everybody seems to be punching into the groundwater and right you know if it was yeah, in Manaville, whether it's been in middle island whether it's been that's the plane uh, on the property is pretty close to here. Yeah, yeah the irony is that not too far from there. There, that is, that happened. Yeah, exactly that's the the end and, game. And line. now the complaint yeah. is that everyone's jet skiing on it. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it has it really has. I've, I haven't seen a mine that's actually fit done yet. I've seen that there's a there's a significant, two significant mines, one in Middle Island, one in uh, Manville, which they. They are lakes essentially, but they're still mining them. There's no recreational activity going on just yet. I don't hmm. that I'm aware of. But Jim, just so you know, I I'm familiar with the facility in Riverhead. It was um, Island Water Park. Mm -hmm. It's on uh, 25. Um, that is was a mine land. Was it? Right? Yeah, yeah. So Coast Splash? Yes. No, no, Island no, Water no. Park down by Upcal. Yeah, um, yeah down, down by the ball field. If you oh, go okay. back past the that ball Disney field, World. there's oh, a okay. former mine that was back there, and their intention <laughs> was to mine the groundwater and now turn it into uh, okay. you know, an attraction. With That's an indoor water facility? Well, the they're going to have an indoor component, indoor. but then there's also there's actually a, a mine lake that they okay. are planning to have, I think, like a zip line kind of pull mm -hmm. people across. Yeah, yeah, there's been some that, joke like they want to call it splish splat. I've seen all sorts of plans for Upcal over the <laughs> ski, ski, indoor ski mountains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Cool. So, all right. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, you know, uh, you know, kind of appreciate, um, you know, the opportunity to come in. And again, we're, you know, uh, you know, we're trying to be, you know, as, you know, again, appreciate the opportunity to continue <laughs> talking with the town and any residents. And, you know, again, we're not, you know, we, you know, look, we get it, right? When there's people see trucks, people, you know, People have questions, so we're you know we're going to be you know you know so again appreciate the opportunity to come present well, information, you for, take your questions. Uh, you know we tried to be here as as soon as we possibly could. Um, uh, you know because we we want to be transparent as we go forward. If questions arise, you know we'll certainly do our part to uh, you know to work with uh, you know not only the DEC but you know everyone in the community and. You know, if you hear of anything, you know, Bill is, you know, <laughs> you know, you know how to get a hold of uh, the team. Uh, 
you know, again, we're happy to answer any questions, be out there, and, uh, you yeah. know, continue to work with the town and the community. So thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you for thank you. coming here and letting us better understand the project and answering questions. I'm still sort of viewing it as a reclamation project and that's beneficial because we have an abandoned mine and you're restoring it. So to some future, we don't know what the future holds, but there, there are definitely going to be community impacts to the project. But um, DEC hasn't done a uh, secret determination yet though, right? They have not. Okay. They, uh, we, we spoke to them last week. We talked about the traffic is we're going to be submitting and we'll copy you and everything. Just so, it's all public, obviously, but um, we'll make it fast track it. We can just copy you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, they had asked about traffic and then we had BHB do a traffic analysis. Yeah. And, I mean, so we're submitting that. So again, so to me, this is a reclamation project. It's just yeah. a particular one that brings it up to grade rather than creates a lake somewhere. But, uh, you know, if they're viewing it differently than that, or if the town views it differently than that, you know, that could complicate things. But at least through the lens I'm looking at it, it just seems like an abandoned sand mine that's being restored to some more usable property. So for whatever reason, whether it's for preservation down the road or for recreation down the road, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find, it, find that out later. Yeah, we don't have any, yeah. That's and, to, and to make sure that we can take the the contaminated material off site. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it really, too, you know, that, right. that, I mean, again, in it's terms a of, you know, well. what George kept saying about the model, it's, it's making sure that we have a model that allows us to fund, you know, the millions of dollars it takes to, to take that off. To right. take that's that why material it off. It, right, right. Nobody else had the model that worked to right. pay and for that. That's really, I thank you for bringing that Cause, back. Because, 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 but for, but for that, you, this material, you know, again, if everyone just said, hey, you know what, let's just call it a day, scrap the whole thing, everyone walks away. You still have thousands, you know, tens of Good thousands luck. of the yards there with the of, 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 of right. contaminated material. Right. Um, so, as part of this, that material will be coming off. Yeah, so that is really important. the heart of what is a reclamation project. No, I know, I know, and it's, yeah. I know that the DC. So it's an environmental cleanup project. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, and it's also listed in our and the original site list. That <clears throat> oh, really? So yeah, that's really important. Thank you for. Bring that up as well. I think in as much as you can meet with the community and maybe CAC people and, mm -hmm. and others, uh, you know, to talk through some Absolutely. of the logistics, that would be very helpful to us, right? So the double's going to be the monitoring of what's coming in and, you know, making sure, because we've all, fortunately, you can't use the we've material We've all experienced, for yeah, yeah. No, not so great situations. <laughs> bring it all over. Right. <laughs> well, this is <laughs> to, extreme monitoring. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like there's Wi-Fi, yeah. there's cameras, there's... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's pretty that's going to be the key thing, right? Now. Um, it was actually an expensive. Uh, Roberto Clemente Park well, situation. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just <laughs> keep us in the loop, John. Yep, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll copy and we had everything. some residents, I'm sure, watching. They were made aware of it today, which was helpful. I'm sure we'll have some other questions. So. Absolutely. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. You. So, Take care. Bye -bye. Any other quick updates? Because I, I have. I sort of have to run right now to another event. Yeah, two quick things. Youth Bureau has their last teen night next Wednesday uh, at Loveland Park. If you want to uh, play basketball, have, participate in the barbecue, or even joust that night, uh, you can you can come down uh, grade seven through twelve. Their new fall brochure is out, <coughs> and last night uh, tonight's concert at Good Ground Park starts at six p.m., not seven. Okay. Who's playing? Uh, Nina, etc. Jousting. Jousting, sorry The official it. state sport of Maryland. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the official. Can't make it up. Town board activity. I, I, I thought it was Monty Python. But uh, <laughs> uh, is there anybody, anyone, okay, anyone else? <clears throat> All right, I'll make a motion to end our work session and go into executive session. Um, Second. And on acquisitions, confidential legal advice, contracts, personnel. So we have a pretty lengthy executive session agenda. Um, seconded by Councilman Mobile. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourned.